Good morning and welcome to worship and a particular welcome to those joining us for the first time. A very happy new year to you all. This morning we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord, the story of the Magi who travel from lands afar to visit the Christ child Jesus. Here at St Augustine's Church we aim to be an inclusive worshipping community that seeks to serve others. So a warm welcome wherever you are and every blessing for the year ahead. Although the beckoning star heeded by wise travellers long ago no longer leads the way, the manger born Christ is still to be found and followed. We are not brought to our knees in surprise as were those journeyers of old, yet our desire to worship can be as deep as theirs. And though we do not bear gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, we offer ourselves and what we have. The story continues, the good news abounds, there is a living Christ to discover and worship and serve. Let us rejoice and be glad.
to be ready inside as well as outside. Let's turn our back on the things that stop us coming close to God. Lord Jesus, for the wrong things we've done, we're sorry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the wrong things we've said, we're sorry. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the wrong things we've thought, we're sorry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grateful for the glory revealed today through God made flesh, let us pray. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honour him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts, and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea. For this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come the one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi, and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, Report to me, so that I may go and honour him. When they heard the king, they went, and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house, and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honoured him. Then they opened their treasure chests, and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words I speak and the thoughts of all our hearts be real for us and honest to you. Amen. I'll begin by reading us a poem by Deborah Cooper entitled Collecting Light. And I thought I should mention that chickadees are a group of North American birds in the tit family. Collecting Light. I see the way the chickadees take turns at the feeder. I watch a neighbour take her husband's hand. I see the way the sun will find the only interruption in dark clouds to toss this amber light across the pines. I see a row of cars stop on the road until the orange cat has safely crossed, then take off slowly should she change her mind. I watch the way my brother lifts our mother from the wheelchair to the car, the shawl he lays across her lap. I save up every scrap of light because I know it will take each tiny consolation every day to mend the world. Isn't this a wonderful poem? We're living in really challenging times 
the number of coronavirus cases are growing in this country and in many other countries too. We long for better times to come, for healing and wholeness, for freedom from all the restrictions. Right now we need every scrap of light we can find to lead us onwards, to give us hope and courage, to help us mend God's creation. Today we begin the season of Epiphany, which will last for four weeks. The word Epiphany means manifestation, to appear or to reveal. The season of Epiphany is about paying attention to the ways in which God is manifest in our midst. In the season of Epiphany, we're invited to collect every scrap of light, every sign that draws us closer to God. In today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, which Kay read for us, Magi notice a star appear in the east. The star is a sign, a scrap of light, that draws them to Jesus, who reveals God's loving presence. I wonder, what are some of the scraps of light that have drawn you closer to God? Today, I want to invite you to collect these moments of grace, these signs of God's presence in your memory and give thanks for them. In Deborah Cooper's poem, it is the goodness of the natural world and the tender care of human life that offer her scraps of light. Like God's creation, the Bible is full of scraps of light that can draw us closer to God. The writer of Psalm 119 says to God, Your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. When we read the Bible carefully and prayerfully, God promises to draw near to us, to guide and sustain us on our journey of life. The story of the Magi has inspired people across the world to create wonderful traditions. Recently, I discovered the tradition of watchwords from the Moravian Church. A watchword is a verse from the Bible, which each worshipper picks from a basket. The early Moravians believed selections were not random, but a divine gift. Like the star that guided the Magi, the word an individual happens to select may shed light on their journey during the year. A watchword is a scrap of light that can draw us closer to God. This week I read a Moravian church minister uh, about him who confessed that much to his embarrassment, one year a young man from his congregation picked out a blank card from the basket. The man was gracious and wise. He said, maybe God's telling me to read the Bible until I find the verse that speaks to me. He chose to make meaning from the mistake. Though his card was blank, he saw an opportunity. This story speaks to me of the creative work of God's spirit. Over the next few days, everyone on our mailing list should receive a watchword to keep. If you're not on our mailing list but would like a watchword, please let me know. It contains a verse from the Bible and some words from a hymn. You're invited to reread the verse every few weeks. It is a scrap of light to be remembered and treasured. Meditate and pray with the watchword, knowing that God is present to guide your life. Pay attention to the meaning of each word of the verse. How might the Spirit be speaking into your life? And so as we begin this season of Epiphany, let's pay attention to every scrap of light, every sign in creation and in the Bible that can draw us closer to God. Let's collect them up and treasure their wisdom because it will take each tiny consolation every day to mend the world. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, 
his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as Christmas 2020 draws to a close, we give you thanks for the love and care of family, friends and neighbours. We give thanks for those who have gone the extra mile to help others during the past year. We give thanks that your promises to us are true and trustworthy and for the knowledge that you are always there with us, no matter what. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look forward to 2021, hoping that it will be a better year. We think of our world, remembering people who are imprisoned or persecuted for their beliefs. We ask that you will strengthen them and give them hope. We ask for the Lord's help in combating climate change. We pray for an end to wars and conflicts and that the hungry will be fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our own nation, we give thanks for our health service. We pray for doctors and nurses and all who work in our health service and continue to give so much but are now faced with another mountain to climb. We ask that the Lord will sustain them and bring relief as they continue to care for the sick. We give thanks that vaccines have been developed and hope that the COVID virus pandemic will soon be under control. We remember our young people and teachers, hoping that school life will soon return to normal. We think of our Prime Minister and Government and for all those charged with making difficult decisions, asking for the Lord's guidance in all they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to the Lord all who are unwell or in need at this time, particularly remembering Tony, Ian, Margaret, Elaine, Rita, Nikki, Gemma, Barry, Nicola, Michelle, Pauline, Ella, Dave, Pearl, Rodney, Kathy and Sean and in a moment of silence we remember those known personally to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Father, we think of our own church and its members. We pray that 2021 will be a successful year for us, both spiritually as we grow and learn more about you, but also in our communities as we spread the good news of Jesus to those we meet. Guide us in all we do and say, bless us and help us to be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring our prayers and our hopes and our fears to the Lord as we join in saying the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
sins alloy All our costliest treasures bring Christ to Thee, our Heavenly King Holy Jesus, every day Keep us in the narrow way And when earthly things are past Bring our ransomed souls at last Where they need no star to guide Where no clouds thy glory hide In the heavenly country bright Need they no created light Thou its light, its joy, its crown Thou its sun which goes not down There forever may we sing Alleluia's to our King The blessing of the one who was, who is, and who is to come be upon you all, redeeming your past, filling your present, and lighting up your future. In the name of the living God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Go forth in the light of God's star. Go forth committed to a journey of faith and courage. Go forth to give the precious gift of your life to Christ. We will go forth and let the star guide us. We will share with others the journey of life. We will praise God for the gift beyond measure, Jesus Christ. Amen.